As some of you might have guessed already, this channel is focused on featuring really old money. And there's one very old currency that is still in continuous existence, given one or two alterations since its inception back in the Middle Ages. That currency is the British Pound, also known as Pound Sterling. And today, we're going on a medieval tour to learn a bit about the history of medieval English coinage. We also have the privilege of being visually guided by a local collector and some of his coins. I want you all to meet Luke. Hello everyone, and welcome to a very special video. My name is Luke, from the Hammered Corner here on YouTube. Today's video is on the coins of medieval England, and I am honoured to share my coins and videos for the Classical Numismatic YouTube channel. For more videos on all things English Hammered Coins, you can find links to the Hammered Corner YouTube channel on screen and in the description. So without further ado, please enjoy. The numismatic history of England is as diverse as the many kingdoms that dotted the land throughout the centuries and the many peoples that came and went. But if there is one coin, one denomination that is worthy of attention, it is the penny. Today it's basically a worthless coin but it has been minted by the multiple millions throughout the centuries. It was a very respected coin throughout Europe, and today we're having a look at some of its fractions and multiples as well. The plunging of most of Europe, including England in the Dark Ages, after the collapse of the Roman Empire, saw its complex monetary standard devolve into local barter and the use of precious metals mostly on its metal weight as a means of making transactions. A silver ingot, reminiscent of the standard Roman ingot, slowly became standardized in the English territory, being referred to a pondus or a libra. But as we reach the reign of King Offa, around 785 AD, we see the introduction of the first penny, a silver coin of around 1.5 grams, inspired on the Carolingian denier and the earlier Roman denarius, that would be fixed with the 92.5% silver content we know today as sterling silver. Other kinds of silver coinage still existed on other parts of the English territory, but the penny would distinguish itself for its regularity and its quality silver. So this new penny would represent a movement towards a unified, high-quality coin of the region, as it was slowly adopted all over the island throughout the following centuries. But this new monetary system would only truly take off, being a coin minted in significant quantities, higher degree of quality, quality and using standard designs under the Plantagenet kings, which leads us to our very first coin. We jump from Offa all the way to the reign of Henry III, when England starts seeing its first unified coinage minted in really big numbers and in regular quality. Apart from some very rare pieces, the penny itself was the only coin denomination minted, which is pretty remarkable. Let's take a look at this example, minted in London between 1251 and 1272, called the Long Void Cross Penny. On the obverse, we can see this very medieval looking stylized bust of the monarch, with his hand on the outer sec sector of the coin holding his scepter. The location of the scepter, the tip, was used as a guide to begin the legends which read Enricus Rex III, or King Henry III. The reverse features the long voided cross with a series of pellets in the center. And the legends, interestingly, mention the money year responsible for the issue and the location where it was issued. Dawi on Lunday, or David of London. Now, I mentioned that the penny was the only type of denomination minted, but this is not a very efficient way of running an economy. You need change for that coin, as a penny would represent maybe nearly half a day's wages. And you wouldn't buy your daily bread with so much money, so they came up with a pretty interesting idea. You see, the coin has this very convenient reverse with a cross that perfectly partitions the coin in four. You chop it in half, and you have a hepney or halfpenny. You chop it again, and you have a farthing. For quite a long time, chopped coins worked as pocket change on the local marketplaces, which solved the problem of smaller transactions, but 
it was a clear evidence that a monetary standard was a little bit backwards and the economy was becoming too complex for it. So a new mod monetary standard would have to be implemented. Edward I, Henry's son, who reigned between 1272 and 1307, took some very important steps on permanently monetizing English society by establishing a series of denominations, each one with its own properly struck round coins, half pennies and farthings. These coins would keep being struck in its individual denominations until the 20th century. So how about we start by the humble little farthing? This impressively small coin had to use slightly simplified designs compared to its bigger brothers. The coin was simply too small for a lot of details to be placed. We see a facing bust of the monarch with the legends Edward Rex Anglie, Edward, King of England. The reverse follows the cross with pellets design, but this time with a filled cross instead of the previous voided cross, as a reminder that these coins were not supposed to be chopped. The most common reverse typically only named the city where it was minted, like in this case, where we read Kiwitas London or the City of London. Although some small variations also appeared, for example, some legends could read Londoniensis or coming from London. We then move to the halfpenny. Now the engravers could have formed a bit more detail on the flan. In fact, the halfpenny as we will see, it's basically a compressed version of the full silver penny. We see a more detailed bust of the monarch with the abbreviated legends Edward Rex Anglie, Dominus Hibernia, or Edward, King of England, Lord of Ireland. The reverse, very similar to the farthing, refers to the city of issue. There were quite a lot of different mints, but for simplicity in this video, all of these were minted in London. So once again, we see the Kiwitas London on a bigger format. And finally, we get to the main piece, the penny. We are greeted by basically a larger version of the half penny design with twice its weight and the typical legends, Edward, King of England and Lord of Ireland. The reverse is also exactly the same as the previous ones, referring to the issuing city. England by that time had a properly modern monetary standard, and its silver quality was very well respected on the European mainland, which was plagued with a lot of different coins of very inferior silver quality. A sterling silver penny could get you very far on any marketplace of mainland Europe. So with the development of European economies at the late Middle Ages and the gradual inflation from the incremented economic activity overall, soon a denomination bigger than the penny also started being on demand. Edward I's grandson, Edward III, successfully implemented the groat, a coin worth four pence and a must-have for any medieval coin collector. This particular example dates from 1351 and I just love how it looks. On the obverse, we have this gorgeous crowned facing bust of Edward III, made in a level of quality that could be considered nearly pre-Renaissance, inside a globular border with the legends Edward de Gratia Rex Anglie ze Francia, Dominus Hibernia. Edward, by the grace of God, King of England, France, and Lord of Ireland. The legends continue with the very well-established tradition of the cross and the reverse. But this time, the legends occupy two different layers, since the flan is much wider. On the inner circle, we have the typical city mint inscriptions. Once again, Kiwitas London. And the reverse has the sentence, Posui Deum Auditorem Meu, or I have made God my helper. Medieval coinage poses some challenges, even for people used to ancient coins and their somewhat easier to read legends, but it's a fascinating world on its own. I recommend everyone takes a look at it, really. And a great starting point, I would say, is by heading over to our guest's channel, The Hammered Corner. Luke is a very knowledgeable guy, he really puts a lot of love in his collection and his videos, and I recommend you have a look. 
So how about you guys? Have you got a medieval coin? Are you curious about any particular kingdom or country in the past where you would love to have a medieval coin? Let me know in the comments. Hopefully in the future I'll be able to feature even more passionate collectors here on YouTube. But for now, I hope you all stay safe and see you soon.